Om Nat Pachka Pa Ech Om Nat Pachka Pa Ech Om Nat Pachka Pa E E O O E O Om Nat Pachka Pa Ech Om Nat Pachka Pa Ech Om Nat Pachka Pa E E O O E O Hello and welcome back to another Healing Hikes adventure for this week. Last time we did an overnight hike, we did Mount Feathertop and I did a gear load out there as well and I showed you how everything in my pack only weighs 6.7 kilos. So tonight I'll go through it only briefly but I'll show you the contents and the pack measurements for my overnight pack. Last time we did the Redwood Forest in Warburton. We did that walk so be sure to check the video out after this one. But for today, where are we? We're in the beautiful Mount Coal State Forest crossing over with Mount Bungaroo State Forest. And we're doing the Berimpo Walk. I might be pronouncing that right, I might not be. I'm terribly sorry. Um, so yeah, we're doing the overnight hike tonight. So I hope you're all well and happy hiking. So some key stats to do with this hike. It's 20.6 Ks. So we're gonna do about six or seven Ks today and about 13 kilometers tomorrow. It's a maximum elevation of 970 meters and a minimum elevation of 470 meters. That's above sea level. We're gonna do a maximum about 1,000 meters in height of climbing and about 1,000 meters in going down descent as well. The indigenous Australians that lived here in this state forest called it, were called the Buripo Bullock Clan. And they called this state forest Burit Buripo, which means wild. This state forest covers 12,000 and 150 hectares of land. It's absolutely massive. Just thought I'd show you this beautiful sort of stepping stones as we come up our first little proper hill climb this is just amazing look at this and you can hear the water running down in between these huge granite and sandstone boulders so I'll go a bit further into the geological formations and the reasoning behind it soon Wow later in the video the moss and the algae so you can see that that's on the southern side of the rock so moss and algae only grows on the southern side because it gets the less sunlight so that's the northern side so that's an easy way to navigate naturally The 
this beautiful state forest formed over 390 million years ago. One of my most favorite things is truly hiking in the rain. And I may sound crazy, but you get this mystic fog, just this Harry Potter feel, enchanted, you don't know what's there. Everything sort of is just alive on another level, as opposed to when the sun's hitting it. It's just the smell of the moisture and, oh, you know, I get to test out my wet weather gear this weekend. Look at these big rocks here. Absolutely amazing. So I just thought I'd show you a bit of the trail. Just sort of climbing around this little rock here. Look to the right and you've got this massive sort of gully here with ferns. As the track weaves around. So this um, Birimpo walk, sorry if my pronunciation's not right. It's a challenge for most experienced bushwalkers because it's a grade four hike. But it's a rewarding two day walk that winds through as you can see these cool fern gullies and tall massive forests, eucalypt forests. We're going to take in views of the surrounding hills of Mount um, State uh, Coal, Mount Coal State Forest and the Mount Bungaroo State Park as well. deep and vast that is over there. That's sick. show you a bit of the trail as we're walking here. So the track off also offers views of Mate Langi Gikarin, Giran, um, the Grampians to the south towards Mate Cole and the western plains of Victoria. The track is very well defined as you can see. There's a lot of signposts everywhere and the walk's been designed for those just looking for a relaxing walk in the beautiful surrounds. Look how foggy it is. I'm absolutely drenched. Head to toe, shoes, everything, but I'm loving it. Just this full immersion. It's so good. So I'm doubting that there'll be anyone else at the campsite tonight. If there is, I'll have some company. Wow, look at these rocks. Beautiful. So 
is wow oh my gosh look at that misty fog and this lookout oh wow That's enchanting. It's just moving so still. As you can see it's a bit of an opening here. And there's a big drop off, I'll show you. So we'll just go around. Wow, look at that. Big drop off here. And that fog coming through. This is awesome. It'd be great to see it on a blue sunny day but also seeing it like this is just as beautiful because how often do you get to come out in the fog and the rain all right so we'll continue on the trail down this way we've through some trees oh, this is just breathtaking thanks for watching Just weaving it around, you can see this is where we're going to climb to all the way up to the top of this hill or mountain, I should say. And that's the view down, really, really foggy. And they're also doing um, planned burn offs close by as well. So, there's this been a weird smell in the air, but you really get to see everything up close when it's like this. and get to appreciate it for a different in a different way so yeah we've done the the main part and now this is the hard part just to get to that peak you can see big rocks there all right so we just made it to the top of Sugarloaf Peak and it is absolutely bucketing down it is raining so hard and heavy and the winds just picked up it could be the visibility is really low we are on the top of a peak right now i think it's about 900 meters but um it's going to be interesting trying to set up the tent in the rain stay tuned for that one All right, we've made it to camp. So these are the toilet blocks, as you can see, and they've both got male and female sides. Um, around the back there is the water tank, so that needs to be filtered. Um, so bring either water purification tablets or um, boil it or use a soya squeeze filter. So I've got three different ways of filtering water. So um, yeah, I've got a live straw purification tablets um, and I've got fire method with me as well. So yeah, these are the toilets. Anyways, so the campgrounds are down there. So we'll go check out the campsite, see if they're flooded, see where we're gonna pitch up. And I'll give you a look around. Alrighty, so here's one of the campsites. Sorry, I'll just, here's one of the campsites. It's got little fireplaces as well. So we'll go up and around here and have a look. So I'm just gonna try and pick somewhere not flooded so this looks pretty good up here it's quite high as well and it's got the bench so I could pick it here it's just raining at the moment heavily so don't want to pitch the tent in the rain because I don't want the inside to get wet all right what we might do is go back to the toilet block and get dry get all the dry stuff out wait for a break in the rain then set up the tent then get all the dry stuff inside the tent and I'll let you know how we go 
I might be talking to you when I'm in the tent next time. And I don't think I want to set my tent up because it's a two wall tent in the rain. You know, like the bottom of the tent where I'm gonna where I have to sleep will be exposed to the rain. And there's just no break and let up in it. So um, and I don't want to have to get in the tent all wet, try and dry off. I've still got four or five hours of daylight left. So um, we might just hike on through and finish the whole burrito no walk in a day. It's only 20 kilometers, so you know, you don't have to do it as an overnight hike. You can come and do the 20 kilometers as a day hike. Just give yourself about 10 hours to do it. Um, yeah. Oh, oh, I'm so excited just to be back on the trail, just hiking and enjoying this beautiful world that we live in. All right, so here's a flashback to what's in my pack and in my overnight gear, filmed on Mount Feathertop. So check it out. All right, so let's get through to the gear loadout. So I have all the measurements and the weights here. I have two scales at home. I have a kitchen scales, which does grams, and then I have a bigger scale as well, and a luggage scale. So I've got all the measurements here. So if I'm referring to them, please do apologize. So the bag itself, it's a four class decathlon bag. I don't have a lot of money. Not many people do have a lot of money. So this bag's under $200, um, but it's absolutely amazing. Has big pockets on the side here, big pockets here. I can access this from the top or from the bottom here. It has loop attachments on the top here. It has everything's attachable so this can move this can go up and down this is adjustable all these attachments are here so you can pull at your hips and make it tighter from the hips or pull from the shoulders and make it tighter there there's a pocket here it comes with um, a gear loft as well and a storage um, it comes with a rain jacket um, a, a rain cover fly as well and it has even a pocket on the bottom here so I can access stuff and then it has a drink bottle container on the side here as well. And it also has hydration bladder compatible as well. So really good quality bag. All right, so let's start. So my camping and hiking, the camping sleeping gear only comes to three kilos and 400 grams. So as I mentioned, the tent is 1700 grams. My sleeping bag is 900 grams. My sleeping bag can get me to a minus nine comfort. And it's a really good one. It's a down sleeping bag. I've wrapped it up here. So 900 grams, minus nine comfort, down sleeping bag. Really good stuff there, good quality. All right, and then the tent, 1700 grams. My sleeping pad, here it is. Size of a drink bottle, it's only 500 grams. And then my pillow, um, is on the side here. That's only a hundred grams or 114 grams and it's an air pillow. Okay, so let's go through here. So everything I said is measured. So this is only 300 grams. It's a woolen blanket and I absolutely love it. I can just chuck it on the ground. 300 grams keeps me warm, keeps me comfortable, can keep me off the ground and away from any of those bugs. All right, so remember everything here is only 6.7 kilos. Okay, my cooking kit. So I'll go through my cooking kit in a lot more detail when I do cook dinner. Um, but this only is 580 grams and it's a Pathfinder stainless steel cooking kit that can be thrown on the fire. So I'll go through that for you um, at dinner time. Um, I then carry an extra 200 gram bit of gas. Um, okay, my food bag food is only 580 grams at dinner time I'll show you what's in there but it's a ziplock bag 580 grams I showed you the sleeping pad um, here I have a 200 gram sol um, steel stainless steel cooking um, plate so I can put that on the fire or I can put it on my cooking kit as you saw earlier I cooked up some steak so just a stainless steel um, plate and it's in a bag with a bit of with a bit of tissue. I've got a Teflon plate covering on there as well. Awesome stuff. Um, okay, flip flops. 
not even 200 grams if that not even um, first aid kit is 250 grams in there I've got a snake repair uh, snake kit like bandages compression bandages antiseptic cream band-aids all that like just essentials for strapping and stuff like that 250 grams and it's in a dry bag too um, this is only like 10 grams it's a um, water Pure, uh, purification life straw 10,000 liters can just drink water I've also got a one liter bag there so I can gather water and collect water from that there um, as I said my pillow is 1500 grams um, and the shamag I believe was hundred and thirty grams so that's uh, just another form of a blanket all right and in here Oh, I don't have the measurements for this. I think my waterproof jacket's 200 grams. It should pop up on the screen. But um, as you can see, everything's only like 100, 200 grams. And I, I'm almost done. Illumination, I've got a head torch and a solar powered battery um, lamp lantern. So that's only 138 grams from memory. Um, and my charges, the charges are 400 grams. So I have a, uh, 10,000 milli, no, 20,000 milliwatt Signet power bank, which can charge my phone up to five days, and it's absolutely amazing. Um, really, really strong. And then I've also just got a small little one. I do have a solar panel that I do attach to the bag that is 300 grams, but I didn't bring the solar panel as we're just doing an overnighter tonight. So that's everything. My war, so six, six kilos and 700 grams. Um, Water obviously is two kilos because I've got a two kilo um, thing here. Um, the bag itself is 1.5 kilos, and this, so that takes it up from two kilos plus 6.7, that's 8.7, plus the bag, which is 1.5, so it takes it to 10.2 .2 kilos for everything. But I don't really count the bag because the bag is attached to my body and it's, you know, it's hugging me like a big bear hug. But anyways, tell me what I've missed. Tell me what I've forgotten. Tell me what I've put extra in. Um, that's everything. It's just food and sleep. That's it. No luxury items. I've got all the luxury I need out here. Um, if anything was a luxury item, it would be this. Um, and that's just because I like to cook up some vegetables and some steaks and some halloumi cheese. All right, let's get on to dinner. I hope you enjoyed watching my overnight pack and you got something out of it. Let me know what you liked in there and what you didn't like and what I could improve on. Alright, as it continues to rain, let's hike on out of here. It's just raining down. Oh, so foggy. I'm getting quite cold now actually as well. My fingers are going a little bit white. That's all right, I'm gonna keep hiking, keep moving. It's probably good that I'm not trying to set the tent up in the rain, because obviously everything inside the tent would just get wet and then all my gear and all that kind of stuff. So it's good to keep moving, keep the blood pumping. Still got three, four hours worth of daylight left. So I'm gonna try and use that as much as I can. Got to have a look at my hands. They're like going all white. Like just from all the constant rain, they're all like, it's like I've just had a bath. Alright, so I thought I'd show you a bit of the compass and a bit of the trail. So we're walking a sort of like a northwest direction at the moment. So I always carry a compass on me just so I know 
you know, because the maps are always facing due north. So if I ever like get lost or anything, I've always got this sort of lie on. Very cool. made it back to Rich's campground. Oh, absolutely deserted right here. There's no one here. Oh, well, the sun is about to set. We've smashed it out. So yeah, lucky that you could do this in a day. But um, yeah, you can see Rich's campground's absolutely flooded. Just like Varipno campground was flooded. I didn't film too much of the second half just because it is raining relentlessly. And I don't want my phone to get too wet. So, thanks heaps for joining us for another Healing Hikes adventure for this week. Join us next week. We're going to go on a big, iconic hike all the same. So I hope you're all well and happy hiking.